Welcome back to another episode of the Firearm Show. Indeed. We have a little tiny gun. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an awesome little gun. It, it's it's kind of cool. Uh, this It's actually got some cool history to it. This is a 1908 Vest Pocket Colt 25 Automatic. And, uh, you know, back in the Roaring Twenties, this was a, a pretty common gun for people to carry in their vest pocket, a little personal defense gun, you know, shooting it under the table when someone cheated at blackjack or something, I imagine, you know, <laughs> one of those things. And this actually came to me from uh, my father-in-law when he passed away. I inherited this gun, and it was his grandfather's gun. So it's been in our family for three or four generations, and... I mean, look at the condition of this thing. I, I mean, mean it's, it really is in great condition. I mean, other than what appears to be wear on the magazine, which it's I'm not really expected. sure it is too much, this thing appears to be in mint condition. It is in very good condition. And I looked it up, and this particular one was manufactured in 1920. Wow. Now, let's go through our standard bullet list here. Use cases. I can't think of any no, anymore. I really, I really can't. <laughs> um, it's a 25. And even though diameter-wise, a 25 is bigger than a 22, it just doesn't have any muzzle velocity. It, it really doesn't. And to be expected, what is that? You know, like a three-inch barrel? If that. Three-inch barrel? I think it's an inch-and-a-half barrel on this thing. I mean, it's a tiny gun. Now, I had told you I went and shot this before, and I made... The comment that good luck putting it on paper at 30 feet. So you tried it. I did. I, I got it on paper. On an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, he was on paper. Technically on paper. So you weren't getting bullseyes. But no, no. Far from it. And uh, there there's, tends to be a, a lack of uh, sight on here. There's that. There's the groove and a little teeny tiny uh, thing on the front. So... It's not the easiest thing in the world. It's an absolute last resort. <laughs> <laughs> now, how about possibly as a backup gun? Possibly, but they, I mean, realistically, to be accurate, you'd have to probably be within, what, 15 feet? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, you know, 10, 15 feet, it's going to hurt somebody, oh, you yeah. know? And if you are that type of person that you have your concealed carry and you really want something on your ankle or something, maybe. Maybe. Um, in terms of target gun. Not so much. Not so much either. Um, just, it's actually kind of a pain to shoot. It, it really is. I got pretty big hands. <laughs> You're in the same boat. I mean, it... It's hard to get a grip on this thing. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was fun. It, it really was. But it's it's not practical very practical uses. Yeah, it's not very practical. Not really. Collectors? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a 1908, you know? I mean, yeah. it would be so much more fun to shoot if it, you know, if it didn't actually have that rear safety. The rear safety. Because uh, it's very difficult to try and actually try and get that, if, especially if you have big hands. You almost have to have your second hand. Pushing on the front trigger guard, pushing it back. Because it's a stiff spring. It's a very stiff spring. So, from a collector point of view, absolutely. Yeah. You know, the funny thing is, these things sell for like 600 bucks. So, it's not a cheap gun, but it does have some history to it. Mm -hmm. uh, it was designed by John Moses Browning. So, I mean, it is a, a very high quality. When you, when you really take a look at this and you realize that this was... Originally designed, let me look at my notes here, originally designed in 1908. And to have some of the features that you find on modern semi-automatics, to me, it's just mind-boggling. Yeah, it's impressive. So it's, it's an impressive gun just in terms of firepower. Um, we'll get to that, but uh, it's just an awkward gun to shoot. But fun, sure. Collector, sure. Um, well, that takes us into our next bullet point, uh, ergonomics, which we've kind of already talked about. Not not really so much on there. Um, no, I, we're just we'll just ixnay on the ergonomics. Right? It's a good thing it's a twenty five, otherwise it'd be very unwieldy. Oh man, can you imagine this thing in a 
nine or something. I mean, it would oh. rip right out of your hands. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's no no uh, grip on this thing whatsoever. I mean, I get one finger on it. So not not really great for that. Firepower, we've kind of touched on that. The 25, not a powerful round. No. Um, it inherently doesn't have a high muzzle velocity, and it's a very short barrel. So there's no pressure yeah, behind it. Yeah, it does too. And oof. So down to our next point, cleaning and takedown. I, I, I almost want to Rochambeau for you for it because it's, <laughs> it, this thing's a pain in the butt to tear down. It, um, it is. I, I think I have it. I, I think I got it. All right. Should I try it? Go ahead. Give it a shot. Oh, God. Pressure to perform here, let me tell you. So, it's a slight pullback. <laughs> oh, man. Getting this thing down is quite tricky. Because you have to get it right. There's a soft spot in here. Unlike... Uh, a lot of, uh, well, let's even, you know, go back to uh, the GSG 1911. These have a s specific spot on the slide. Mm -hmm. Tells you exactly where to pull this gun apart. Everything comes apart really easy. On this, it's kind of like, uh, yeah, you know, uh, pull it back a little bit. That's kind of what the instructions say. Oh, there it goes. Hey, I got it, right? So we have our recoil spring. We have our striker spring here, and we have our barrel, which I eventually will, I can get sometimes get out of this thing. It, again, kind of a pain to clean. There we go. Oh, I did it. Does that mean you get did to put it back together? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just because the things are small, and in order for everything to work, the springs are fairly stiff so it does make it kind of a pain to to tear down you know I, I i feel like i'm really ragging on this gun you know it is it, it serves its purpose for what it was designed for i mean it's not designed as a daily planker i mean by any stretch so it's i think as long as you keep that perspective i agree you know we had fun shooting it i, I don't think there's really a question of that it, it can be a fun gun it's just if you really want this to be something you take out to the range every weekend, uh, no. I think you're better off with something else. I agree. So, I managed to get it apart. Wow. Okay. Now I have to try and get it back together again. Make sure I, I have this lined up. Because there's these little screws in here that have to be just right. And if this thing is off at all, good luck getting this thing back together. So, let me see if I can do this, right? So you have the guide rod and the spring, and the guide rod is going to slide into the frame. Okay, now I'm gonna put the slide back on and get that spring in the spring retainer up there without getting the barrel to move back, and at the same time, holding it all together so I can slide the striker back in there which only goes in one way, there it goes, and then the spring, which also has a little piece in there, goes against that plate in the back. I swear, if I get this on the first try, I'm just going to really man. impress myself here. Again, it's, it's this barrel, and this is, this is what just kills you, trying to get everything back together again. Damn. Oh, dude. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> wow. Okay, I got it. So there's your takedown video, and I don't plan on doing it again for a Oh, man, i got to clean it. <sighs> so i got to do this again tonight. Apart. I know. <laughs> um, little six-round magazine, so not much in the way of, uh, you know, rounds there. I'm going to guess these probably aren't too easy to come by. I haven't really looked. Because it's not something I'm going to go out to the range and put a bunch of magazines through. No, you're not. Um, 25 auto, not the easiest ammo to get right now. There's that too. It's really difficult to find. Even some of the online places have been very difficult to get 25 auto from. Fortunately, I had a box that I got with it, a 50, and we've gone through about half of it. 
So I'm probably going to uh, retire this baby for a while until I get some more ammo for it. And then I'll pull it out once in a while when someone wants to come over and fire it. But, um, you know, it's just a, it's kind of a pain. So our next bullet point we always cover, fun factor. And it's kind of fun to shoot. It, it is kind of fun. A little bit of a pain in the neck uh, because of the rear safety. But apart from that, it actually is a fun. It's easily controllable. I mean, it, it is what now, it is. I saw you. And, you know, you're a pretty serious guy. And you had a grin on your face. I, I, okay. <laughs> you I, turned I, around and you went, oh, okay, that was kind of I really thought I was going to break it. but <laughs> <laughs> I think that you even said that, didn't you? I'm like, I think I'm going to break this thing. I don't know. <laughs> um, it, it just takes a little bit of getting used to firing because this uh, grip safe, safety is so stiff. It is. And that that's actually my only real complaint about it. Because um, like I said. Well, in the tear down. And there's that too. And, and the putting back together. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from that, it, it is... It is fun to fire because it's small and it's different, and I like that. I yeah, I agree with and, that. And it's a piece of history. Yeah, it's it's definitely no nineteen eleven or Glock as far as the take down and put back together, but it's a piece of history, and, and as a, as such, it needs to be respected. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, let's. See, our next point is value. Well, there isn't much value in here. I mean, it, these things go for six hundred, six hundred fifty dollars, and. When we were at that last gun show, I didn't find any at that price in as good a condition as this. So it's an expensive gun for what it is, except if you're going for the collector value. That, and that's, I, I think that's the, uh, that right there is what needs to be said. Because really, I mean, you're not gonna use it as a daily planker. You're, I mean, best case scenario, I mean, if you get something like this, I mean, you're going to go with something a little newer. I mean, it's, it's collector's value all the way on that one. But it's nice to have, I mean, I had a 38, um, what was it? A cow, you know, your typical cowboy gun. And it, we'll never shoot it again. I mean, it's, it's a family piece. It will never be shot because they just don't hold up. You know, over time, the, it's just not something you're going to want to put modern rounds into. This guy, it holds up well. 19, this one, manufactured in 1920, means it's almost 100 years old. 97 years old? Sorry, something like that. Yeah, I mean, we're a 90-plus-year-old gun that you can go fire. That's impressive. To, to be able to go out and shoot a piece of history, I think it adds to the value, even though it's a, a fairly expensive piece for being what it is, the fact that you can pick these up and shoot them reliably. We just, we've never had a failure. No, we haven't. It just shows the quality of how they built it. You know, can you name me a gun designed by Browning that sucked? Not a thing. Uh, there's, he might have had some prototypes somewhere in there, but he's known. he was known for creating really good guns. And this is certainly one of those. It's just... It, it has its downsides. It has very limited use case these days, mm -hmm. you know, but to be able to go out and fire a piece of history every weekend if you wanted to, if you could find the ammo, mm -hmm. there's something about that. Um, any final impressions that you had on it? No, I mean, the, the, like I said, I, I, I'm not a person on uh, that likes small uh, handguns, but uh, apart from that safety, uh, the palm safety, I had really no complaints on shooting it. I really didn't. This is actually a lot of fun. You know, if you're putting paper out at 10, 15 feet, you're going to be in the target area. Yeah, oh yes. And so it, you're going to have that satisfaction of doing good with it, uh, even though it's small and it's a little awkward sometimes. But I, to me, again, I think it boils down to being able to fire a piece of history. And I'll say that over and over again. There's nothing compares to that. No. I mean, we looked at that Kiapa 1873-22, which is a reproduction, and yet you still have that cowboy feel, right? Yeah. You, you want to pull it out of a, a holster. You want to, can I fan it? You know, I mean, you, <laughs> that, that tie back to history sometimes is just makes it all worthwhile. I agree with you. So expensive, yeah, 600, 650 bucks for a, a good model. Um, not for sale because it's a family piece, been in the, the family a long time. We'll be passing this down to my son at some point. Um, but it's the Colt 
25 automatic from uh, originally from 1908, manufactured in 1948. That's a good long run on a gun. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of them out there. You can find these on Bud's Guns and uh, Gun Broker. I, mean, I see them all the time, but really try and find one that's in really good condition. This one, uh, once I clean it up again tonight, because we did shoot it today, it will look in mint condition. Let's try and find a good one. Go fire a piece of history with the Colt 45. Or 25. 25. 25. <laughs> Colt 25. Don't Can you imagine this in a 45? Oh, God, no. Bing! It goes out of your hand. Colt 25 automatic.